Okay, these notes are bonding and ion formation. Okay, the force that holds two atoms together is called a chemical bond. Um, I did put the um, words in red that you need to fill in in these guided notes, so this should help. Okay, elements bond together to obtain a stable electron configuration, just like noble gases. So helium, its, it's electron configuration is 1s2. Now, if you remember, the first energy level only has an s orbital. You put two electrons in it, you've filled it up. So it's now got a full valence shell with two valence electrons. Um, neon, on the other hand, has 1s2, 2s2, and 2p, or that should be 2p6, not sp6. Sorry about that, guys. There's a typo in there. But it's 2p6, which is eight valence electrons. So here, let's go ahead and... See if I can't scribble that out and put it to above it. Okay, but remember, all the valence electrons are in the S's and P's. So it's got eight valence electrons. Argon looks just like neon, and then 3s2 and 3p6 with eight valence electrons. So that makes eight your magic number. All of the elements on the periodic table have noble gas envy. They want to be just like them. They would like to have a stable electron configuration. So... Um, there's something called the octet rule. Octet meaning eight, you know, O-C-T is the, the prefix for eight. Well, the octet rule states that the representative elements form bonds so that they can have eight valence electrons, which is a stable electron configuration. Now, there are three ways, only three ways, to achieve this. You can lose electrons, okay? or you can gain electrons. Now when you either lose electrons or gain electrons, this is called ionic bonding. You're forming ions. And if you remember from your definitions, an ion is a charged atom, okay? Now the third way is to share electrons. And this is what we call covalent bonding. Hopefully I can write, there we go, okay, covalent bonding. Now, when an atom loses or gains electrons, they become an ion. An ion is a charged atom. Okay, now there are two types of ions. There's cations, which are positively charged ions. Okay, and then we have anions. Now, anions are negatively charged ions, or atoms, whatever you want to call them. And as I said in class, there's a really good way to remember this. Cats are positively perfect. You know, I'm a cat lover, so i got to have that one. So just, or you can look at cat ions. Cat has, it, you know, it's got a T in it. T looks like a plus sign. I don't know. However you want to figure it out, make sure that you know how to remember it. Okay, let's look at ion formation. Now, if we look at lithium. Now, lithium has atomic number three, so it has three electrons. So its um, electron configuration is 1s2, 2s1, with one valence electron. So let's go, go ahead and draw a little bit of a picture so we're going to put the three protons in the middle. Then we're going to draw the first valence shell, or the first shell. And by the way, I'm doing these like Bohr models just because it's really a lot easier to show you what they look like, kind of. Okay, so it has one. Now, if you'll notice, this last shell has one electron. So it has one valence electron. Now, lithium... It wants to have eight, okay? So somehow or another, it either wants to have eight or it wants to have, it can have two because it can look like helium or it can look like neon. Now neon has eight valence electrons. So there's only two ways to do that. If it loses its one valence electron, it's gonna end up looking like helium. It will have two electrons. Or it can gain seven electrons, making it have eight valence electrons so it looks like neon. Well, I don't know about you guys, but just to get rid of one thing is a lot easier than to try and find seven others. So lithium is not going to gain seven electrons. It's going to lose one. 
And when it does, it's going to look like this. Oops. So let's first. So we're going to write the 3P there. So we'll put this one here and this one here. And then we'll put one here. Now, at this point in time, this is the electron it's going to lose. And when it does that, it's only going to have two, oops, oops, well, I have two electrons once I can draw it properly. I guess I should draw the first shell first. There we go. So it's going to have two electrons. And then this last shell isn't going to have any. So it's only got two electrons now. And in fact, after lithium loses its one valence electron, it has two electrons, but it still has three protons. Did you notice the 3P in the middle? I didn't change that. It doesn't lose or gain protons. So this means it has three positive charges and two negative charges. So it's got these three protons here, and then only two negatives, which means this positive has nothing to cancel it out. The negative charges, the two negative charges, cancel out two of the protons. But that third proton has no, doesn't have an electron anymore to cancel it out. So that means, at this point in time, this gives lithium an overall charge of one. Of a pl well, plus one. Plus one. Yeah. That doesn't look well. Trying to make it so that you can, guys can understand what I'm doing. Here we go. We will just underline it. There we go. Now, lithium's new electron configuration is 1s2. Well, that looks like helium, does it? Because doesn't helium have an electron configuration of 1s2? Okay, so it's happy now. Its electron configuration is very stable at this point in time. Now, the same thing happens to sodium. Sodium has one valence electron, so it's going to lose this valence electron to have a full valence shell. Um, and if you recall, that, well, if you realize that the shell underneath is always full anyway, because it fills up a shell before it goes into the next shell up. So it has to be full. Well, sodium will end up with a plus one charge. In fact, all, and I'm talking about all of the metals, oops, all of them in group one. Now that's just in group one. We'll lose their one valence electron and end up with a plus one charge. So right now, get out your periodic tables. The ones, well, the only blank one you have. And on top of group one, I want you to put a plus one. And that's going to, that way when you look at these, you'll always know group one has a plus one charge. Okay, let's look at group two. Now, group two elements have two valence electrons. They can either lose their two or pick up six more. Now, come on, what's going to be easier? It's going to be easier for them to lose two. So they're going to lose those two valence electrons to end up with a plus two charge. So on your periodic table above group two, I want you to put a plus two. Now, the next, what, eight groups or so, groups three through 12, well, nine groups, they're, van they're called um, transition metals. They have two valence electrons only, but they also have something different than group one and two. They have a D shell. They have electrons in that, those D orbitals, and they tend to dip into those D orbitals to form bonds. So right now, we're going to ignore those. Okay, We're going to stick to the representative elements. And if you remember from the notes from before, the representative elements are groups one, two, and then 13 through 18. They're the ones that just do one thing, okay? They, ha they, they have their valence electrons in the S and P shell, and they lose and gain those valence electrons. They don't worry about the D shell. So we're going to skip over transition elements. Okay. I don't know why I did that. Next, we're going to go into the group 13 elements. Now, they have three valence electrons. They can either lose three or gain five. Well, come on, what's easier? It's easier to lose three, right? So they're going to lose those three valence electrons and end up with a plus three charge. So above group 13 on your periodic tables, put a plus three. Group 14 elements, 
Well, they have four balance electrons, so they can either lose or gain four. They don't care which one they do. They're kind of like the wishy-washy ones of the periodic table. Um, these elements usually have a plus or minus four charge. Now, that's mainly the nonmetals and the metalloids. You start getting into the metals below it, and those metals tend to lose those four electrons. But carbon and silicon, especially those two, eh, carbon really doesn't like to lose or gain electrons, but it will. And same with silicon. Both of them usually form covalent bonds rather than ionic bonds, but when they do form ionic bonds, they can lose or gain those four electrons. Okay, let's talk about group 15. Group 15 elements have five valence electrons. Now, they can either get rid of those five or gain three more. Much easier to gain three more. Now, since they now have three, so they will gain it. Since they now have three extra negative charges, okay, they have a negative three charge. So what's happening is they've got a, you know, so they've got those three extra negatives. So I forgot how many protons one of them would have, but add three more negatives and you have a negative three charge. So above group 15, put in a minus three. Group 16 elements have six valence electrons. They usually gain two electrons, ending up with a negative two charge. So above your periodic table, on your periodic table above 16, put a minus two. And then group 17 electrons, they have seven valence electrons. Okay, and they usually gain one, ending up with a minus one charge. So above group 17, put a minus one. Now, if you want just to keep track of things, go ahead and put a zero above group 18 because they don't do anything. They're the noble gases. They have a stable electron configuration. They really, really, really don't react. Okay. Okay, in summary, when electrons are lost, the element becomes positively charged or a cation. Well, that makes sense because it has more protons than electrons. When electrons are gained, means you're adding negative charges here, the element becomes negatively charged or an anion. That's because they have more electrons than protons. Now, metals will always lose electrons, becoming cations. That includes bismuth, which is in group 15. Group 15, I told you to put a negative three charge above it. Well, that's for the nonmetals nitrogen and phosphorus, and the metalloids, arsenic and antimony. Does not include bismuth. Bismuth is a metal, so it will automatically have a plus five charge. It can lose up to five electrons. If you look in group 14, carbon, silicon, and germanium are the only ones that will either gain or lose electrons. Tin and lead, we don't know about the FL, the fluorovium, whatever that is, but tin and lead will lose either two or four electrons because they can have a plus two or plus four charge. Okay, so they will never gain electrons. They will always lose them. And that's just kind of, that's just, well, that's a property of a metal. Non-metals usually gain electrons, becoming anions. Not always, but you still, I mean, non-metals tend to share also. But they do like to gain electrons. If they're going to lose or gain them, they'll gain them. Okay, so hopefully you understand all that. Um, see you tomorrow. Bye.